Here's another Maya quick tip. For those of you who use or have wanted to use displacement maps, but you don't really necessarily know how to, this is the process you need to go through to get your displacement map plugged into your material and rendered out of Arnold. First thing, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our hypershade. Once you have your hypershade open and your material configured up to the point where you normally have, if you did not see how to configure the normal map, check out my last quick tip. With everything set up, what we're going to do is we're going to hit tab. We're going to add a file texture. We're going to select our texture that we're going to add. We're going to hit open. And from here, we're going to hit tab again, type in displacement shader, drag this guy up here. This displacement shader right here, delete that because we do already have one that's plugged into Arnold's uh, AI standard surface. So from here, we're going to take the out color R to displacement. The reason you're using the red channel is because if you look at your map, it's in a red color scheme. There's really no need to go full RGB with this. You're just pulling certain types of data. With that plugged into displacement, we're then going to take the displacement map itself. We're going to hit this little button. We're going to hit displacement, drag this over to displacement shader. Once that's plugged in, hit render. Let me save this snapshot real quick. And you can see we're already getting a pretty decent result result, but we're not quite there yet. So if you plug this in, you've noticed that you're getting a lot of bumpiness, but it's kind of just distorting the mesh and it's not really doing anything. So here's what we want to do. You're going to go to your mesh. You're going to click it with your attribute editor to open it. We're going to go down to smooth mesh and then we're going to head down to the subdivisions level if it's not already expanded. Subdivisions levels are going to increase the subdivision count of your object at render. Your viewport is going to stay nice and clean, but when you render, Maya and Arnold are going to increase the subdivisions. That way you get a much cleaner, more accurate displacement map. So we're going to set this to about five and we'll go back to our scene here. We're going to save this and we're going to render. Obviously the result that we just got is not what we want at all. Our object has increased in size. It looks terrible. It's spiky, but you can see the gradual progression that we've had here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our hypershade, go to your displacement shader and look at your scale. We're going to change the scale to about point two and we'll see what kind of result that gives us. And we can see that cleaned up our scene quite a bit. So we'll save that snapshot. So we're getting some of the detail that we wanted and we're starting to see a little bit of that geometry displacement that we want, but maybe we're not getting enough. So just play with this scale value a little bit. I think I'll bump mine up to about 0.4 and there we go. So obviously if you want more detail, you can bump up your subdivisions at render uh, as much as you want to. I wouldn't suggest going above 10 just because you're going to horrendously slow down your render. But if you zoom in now, you can see how we are actually now extruding information from the object with a texture instead of actually having physically sculpted detail, we're able to get this nice result and it's changing the silhouette in a way that makes sense for a brick wall. You can play with these settings all you want to, to kind of get your displacement maps functioning the way you want to, but that is how you apply a displacement map and configure it to get the result that you're looking for.